So let me illustrate all of these ideas with the, a very famous data set called the Pima Indian Diabetes. So it's a data set in which the uh, prevalence of diabetes in a population of Indian American natives was correlated with different parameters. So let's take a look at this. Let's call some libraries and let me show you what is inside. Okay, you can see that diabetes is a factor, negative or positive, and they are trying to correlate this with age, pedigree, mass, insulin levels at the morning, I think it is, uh, triceps pressure, glucose, and pregnancy. Okay, now this, uh, I think insulin is the amount of insulin per day. Okay, so first of all, eye inspection trumps everything else, so let's plot this information. I love this uh, function pairs panels from the psych library, I have commented before. A couple of things here. In, in this part, in this upper triangle part of the matrix, you can see correlations. These are obtained two by two. And when the variables are numerical, like pre pregnant and glucose, this is a linear correlation. And when you have a categorical variable like diabetes, this is a logistic regression. So this is a kind of logistic regression for free. And the other comment is that if you take a look at diabetes, the, the correlation is larger for age, pedigree, uh, mass, and yeah, glucose. So this is going to give us an idea of the importance of different variables. Okay. Another thing that is interesting, and I'm going, to, I'm not going to cover that. I, I, I write you a comment here if you want to play with that. I can see a lot of uh, skewed distribution. So insulin, for instance, um, also age are and um, pregnant are all highly skewed, and that means that you're going to have a lot of outliers, and those could be affect training. So I wouldn't do the things that I'm going to do here. I, I wouldn't do that in a professional project. I, actually, I would stop here and try some. Uh, corrections for the data like using box clocks box cox transformation but that said i'm let's move on so i'm going to do the box plots two by two so i have all eight features as you can see here so i'm going to plot three by three and here we go again as you can see this is diabetes of course glucose is going to be relevant you can see kind of differences but pressure is not relevant, so I don't need to do any fancy machine learning algorithm to realize this, okay? The other thing is that insulin is highly skewed, as I've shown in this other plot here. And you can see that in this box plot, because you have a lot of outliers there. So this is a, a clue that you shouldn't proceed with the analysis. I'm going to do that, because that's not the purpose of this video, but you should correct that, okay? The other thing is that age probably is going to have an effect. You can see that the boxes are different. Maybe mass and maybe pedigree, but the other parameters are more or less uh, overlapping. Okay, so let's move on. And the third thing that I'm going to do is split the data set as usual in a 20% in a for testing, 80% for training and cross-validation. So let's create this. I'm going to use a tenfold cross-validation. I want to store all the information available. This Sometimes this is not necessary, but let's leave that. And also I want to plot some rock curve, so I'm, I'm going to store probabilities and predictions. So the first thing that I'm going to do is try to fit a, ne a neural network. Yeah, I'm going to center the data. This is also important. Remember tip number uh, number three, I think it was. And I'm going to try different decay rates in the training and different uh, neural number of neurons in the hidden layer from 3 to 25 uh, steps by 4. So let's run this. This is going to take a little bit. As usual, later I'm going to calculate the predictions. If I don't say anything, as this I'm training a categorical variable, the predict function is going to produce a vector with, in this case, uh, the two levels of the variable. In this case, the levels were, I don't remember, well, somewhere else, probably uh, positive and negative. So th this is going to be a vector with positives and negatives. So let's run this. And let me show you inside. That's, here we go. And now the confusion matrix, a lot of information. Accuracy is pretty high, and that's because you have higher numbers in the diagonal than of the diagonal. Of course, this is not perfect, and that and that's the reason why specificity and sensitivity is so poor. So more things that we can do is take a look inside. So cross validation tells us that the the optimal size according to accuracy. Be careful with that is uh, three neurons in the hidden layer and the decay rate of uh, ten to the minus three. What else that we can do? Let's plot this training. You can see that this is the the optimal one is this probably this three, but maybe fifteen is going to perform well. It depends on on the objectives of your model. 
and then let's plot the neural network so here we have uh, if you want to plot this you have to remove this figure this is not very okay very fancy but okay let's do this fast and this is the, the network okay another thing that we can do is try to evaluate different metrics uh, among all of them this is the true probability in each mean you can see that you have some parts which are outside of this straight line so this means that it's not very accurate and the other thing that is easy to uh, to interpret is the rock curve so this is not perfect otherwise it would be like kind of a step here and the area under the curve is not very high 79 percent so okay let's move on i'm going to train now our decision tree okay and this is the output okay and again let me plot this using well i, I don't need to plot this but you can see that the first uh, decisions in the tree uh, the, the variables that I'm using here, or the algorithm is using here, is glucose, age, mass, and pedigree. So this is an, a hint that probably those variables are going to be the most important. Okay, let's train a random forest. And now, one of the tips that I was saying, compare different models. In the case of neural networks, uh, decision trees, and random forests, remember that they have implemented variable importance uh, cr criteria inside. So here we go. Oh. So here we go. Then we go step by step. So the first plot is this one. According to neural network, the, the most important variables are mass, glucose, and age. Pedigree could be kind of similar to age, so I would consider including that. What about the decision tree? Uh, more or less the same. Glucose, age, and mass. Pedigree is a little behind, but but not that much behind. And what about random forest? Probably this is the most reliable. Again, glucose, mass, pedigree, and age. So more or less, they all agree that these three are the most important. Okay, but this is not an algorithm. This is a hint in order to help you decide for your own problem. Okay, so let's check. What about uh, sensitivity analysis for the neural network? So let's create a new window. This is because otherwise it's going to fit inside. Here we go. And again, you can see here that the most sensitive variable is mass, then age, then glucose. As you can see the 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 outcomes are, are different in according to different methods, but this is good because they are looking at different parts of the data. <laughs> and this sensitivity analysis performed with this library is giving us a, a broad idea and takes into account synergistic interactions between variables. But, but, but again, the four most important variables are again the same. So I'm pretty confident that those are the ones I should include in my analysis. Okay. Okay, let's move on and uh, let's do this uh, interesting part that I mentioned, this uh, algorithm proposed by, by some guys and discussed in, in, in Max Kuhn's book, which is called Recursive Feature Structuring, which is an automatic way to do all the things that I've done manually. So the idea is the following. Again, I'm going to divide, um, I split my data set in uh, data for training and for validation. And here we go. Uh, this is not very important. I'm going to use different controls this is used for uh, this has a specific functions uh, required in order to, pr to produce this training and as you can see here this uh, this recursive feature instruction is kind of like training so i'm using some training data for which these are the features and these are the output that i want to predict these are the sizes of the variables the number of, of combinations that i want to try so i want to include all of them and none of them just one of them and this is the control before okay you can copy this and create your own snippets so let me run this sometimes it, this takes a while it depends on the size of the data set and here we go so again according to this algorithm in which remember it, it takes the eight variables removes one try again removes the other then include the first one and do all the permutations available and then reach a criterion is which one produces the highest accuracy uh, depending on the combinations and then ranks all the variables and it tells me that the, the top three variables are again glucose age and mass so again i was confident before but i'm pretty confident now if you take a look at this table the higher accuracies are reached for this one variable number three variable number four variable number six and i think those are the indices of these variables okay you can plot this and and this method tells you that three variables is the optimum number of combinations okay uh, i want to remember 
to recall you something that I've mentioned before, these distributions are highly skewed, so I wouldn't I would take this with a pinch of salt so, because probably most of these predictions are not are not very robust because of those outliers. And and depending on the, the on the on the features, sorry, on the rows of the data frame that you have selected for training and testing, probably you're going to reach it slightly different outcomes. Okay. So where I was here, here I am. Okay, so what now? One thing that you could try now at this point, maybe you can stop the video, I'm not going to say anything relevant here, but you can you could try to repeat all the analysis, but instead of using all the variables, uh, use just the three more important variables. And so I'm going to do a neural network again, a decision tree and a random forest, but just using glucose, H and mass. So let me run this again. Well, about one minute later, this is the output. Okay, it finished the training. And let's plot the confusion matrix, and you see that accuracy is a little bit higher than before, and also have improved uh, sensitivity and specificity. And remember, I'm not using uh, instead of eight variables, I'm using just uh, four. Probably I could improve that, including pedigree. Remember that pedigree was some somewhere in the in the boundary between important and not important. Okay, let's create a decision tree. Okay, let's see again. Accuracy is not bad. And random forest, which probably is going, it's going to be the one who performs better. Oh, sorry. Stop here. This is glucose mass plus H. Again, make some predictions. And the confusion matrix. And again, the accuracy is not, not that good. Okay. So let's compare different models. We have this function evil M from the ML evil library. And again, a quick inspect of the data. Let me go here. Okay, you can see right away that the decision tree, this uh, with all the variables, is crap. is really bad. This one is the decision tree with just three variables. So in this case, decision trees are not performing very well. This is the original neural network, and this is not bad, 0.71. But the best methods here are the neural network with just three predictors, the random forest with all the predictors and random forest with just three predictors. And what's the meaning of this? So, so the, the main message here, and to me this is the most important part of the video, is that a neural network with all the parameters performs poor, poorly compared with a neural network with the right parameters. So going back to the at the beginning of the video, so why, why does it matter? So it matters because less is more. So the most interesting variables are going to improve your fitting and go are going to improve your classifier, and in the end you're going to have a better model. And now, this is the end.